Hey everybody! So today I thought we could take a look at another interesting prop from Star Trek. This is from Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, um, the one with the whales. And this is the prop that is seen when uh, Chekhov and Uhura sneak onto the aircraft carrier, uh, which happens to be called the Enterprise, and they have to get over by the, um, the uh, nuclear reactor so they can hold up this device, uh, which is called a photon collector, and sometimes it's called a power leech and the uh, Chekhov holds that up to the reactor and it fills up with photons and then they can use those to uh, recharge or recrystallize the Klingon crystals so they can get back home. So um, this particular prop, now I have two of these and these are both replicas. So this is the first one that I had gotten originally and um, I have electronics for it. Let me turn it on. So you can see the lights work like they did in the movie. And so um, I have the lights custom made. Now this uh, prop was made by a company called Marco. I don't think they're around anymore. Um, it's made of resin, so it's got some heft to it. And it looks pretty good. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of these made. In fact, I think Marco was the only company that actually made these originally. There you can see it speeds up. Like it did in the movie, it would go faster and faster. So every time they would cut back to uh, Uhura and Chekhov, the lights would go quicker and quicker like it's filling up with photons. This particular circuit just goes from this mode to the fast mode. But it looks pretty good. So um, as good as this looks, there's a bunch of inaccuracies on it. And so that's where the other one comes in. So uh, let me show you that one. All right, so this is actually a Marco prop as well. But a friend of mine um, took it and uh, modified it so that it is much more accurate. So these little cylinder pieces, he actually made them shorter, like they're supposed to be. And then the little tips here, he made them look more like they were in the movie because the original Marco version has them sticking out a little too much. He also made the handle thinner, and I'll talk about this here in just a minute. And then he also uh, made a few other modifications in here, and then he also added some really cool lights. Now, I'll talk about this as well, but he made it so that this little cover comes off. It's magnetic. The little switch is right in here. And this one's really cool. You'll see that it starts out slow. You can hear the beeping. And then it'll start going quicker and quicker. And, and also what's cool about this one is that these lights started out dim on the first couple of uh, beeps. And then they got brighter. So if you watch that scene, you'll see that these start to get brighter as it's supposed to be filling up with photons. So you can see this is actually starting to speed up a little bit. Let's see, what else did he change on here? He did quite a bit of modifications on here. Now this takes a little bit of time to kind of get going. So I'll probably kind of intercut in here to kind of show you as it gets faster and faster. Okay, so now you can see it's picking up more speed here. And it'll start to go really fast. In the movie, um, it was moving really quick. So you can see it's actually starting to pick up some speed now. All right, let me intercut again. All right, now it's really picking up some speed. There, I think it's about, I think that's about as fast as it goes. Yeah, so that's the quickest it goes, and then at that point you can turn it off, and then when you turn it back on, it restarts all over again. All right, so um, now uh, I was fortunate enough to talk to the gentleman that made the original prop, and he was telling, telling me some very interesting things about it. First of all, um, if you watch that scene in the movie, <clears throat> there's a, um, most of the time you see it, this piece is not attached to it, but there is one scene where you can actually see that, and uh, let me show you that real quick. Okay, so here's a screen grab from the movie, and um, here you can see Chekhov is now holding that prop, and, and you can see what I'm talking about with, uh, well, you can't really see it in this scene, but it doesn't look like that silver section that was on the bottom of the handle down here was visible when he first turns it on. So I'm guessing this scene was probably filmed after uh, the scene where you can actually see it. Okay, now in this later shot, um, Chekhov is about ready to hand it over to Uhura, and now you can clearly see right here that little section that turns into that big silver dish. So this particular section was filmed earlier, I guess, and then they came back and reshot it for whatever reason. But... Um, yeah, you can see it right there. And so that was later taken off. But uh, yeah, kind of interesting little 
change in the way they decided to do that scene or that prop. All right, so when talking to the uh, gentleman that made the original prop, he was talking about how um, the idea behind this was originally it was going to be half Klingon and half uh, Federation technology. So they had to make the, uh, you know, the crew of the Enterprise had to make this thing kind of on the fly um, since they had arrived in Earth in the 1980s. And so it makes sense that it would be half and half. They had to use what was on the ship. Well then, um, originally this section here had these little ridges on here, which kind of mimicked the ridges on the Klingon's head. And then uh, it had this piece on here. And the original idea behind this was that this would fold out like this. Let's see if I can, I may not be able to get all of this out here. Well, it kind of goes like that. So it makes this really cool little dish. And I think on the original prop, as well as this one, uh, they used some kind of a, it's uh, for photograph, it's like uh, photography equipment. I think it was like a dish to reflect light or maybe a flash. And so um, the idea here was that the actor would fold this out, hold this up to the uh, nuclear reactor on the um, um, aircraft carrier, and then this was supposed to act as like the collector right here. But unfortunately, they, they never actually used it. So, uh, you know, it was kind of, well, I guess they just scrapped the idea when they were filming that part of it. So um, I folded it back up now to kind of discuss the rest of this. So the gentleman that made this prop, I, I don't want to say his name because I don't know if I should. So um, he was telling me that uh, they had started filming the scene. And then if you, in that scene where I showed you, you can actually still see that. That was probably the scene that was filmed earlier. And then they later went back and re refilmed it. But that... That segment of that scene was left in there for whatever reason where you can see that. So, you know, I guess somebody just didn't catch it in the editing room. So um, um, he was called up to the office where Leonard Nimoy was because Leonard Nimoy had directed that movie. And they were looking at this prop and he goes, you know, I like it, but um, I, I wish maybe you could simplify it and maybe make it look a little more Federation rather than so much Klingon on it. So he had to go out and modify this right there on the spot in the truck. So he ripped off that piece on here that had the ridges and he added this smooth probably plastic or something on there and then he also pulled this piece off and so um, that's why it looks slightly different most people aren't going to notice it in the scene but it was kind of interesting where they decided to change it and he said interestingly enough when they went back to repaint it at the prop department in uh, Paramount they somehow still painted it the Klingon red so <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting he said there was also a scene um, where they were going to take this thing and when they got it back to the Klingon ship, they were going to actually have this come off. So, so my friend who modified this actually made it so the handle can come off. And then this piece here was going to be inserted into some kind of a console or something on the uh, Klingon ship. And you'd be able to see, you know, probably the lights dimming on this on, in this area. And then the photons going into the uh, uh, the, the uh, dilithium crystal chamber, recharging the crystals. And so that was supposed to be a scene. And so he actually, uh, the prop guy actually had to modify it so that this came off. Well, they, they either filmed that scene and it ended up on the cutting room floor or they just decided not to do it. So <laughs> he was telling me it was all this extra work, but uh, he didn't mind because they paid him for it. So <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. So uh, anyway... So now, um, this thing here, uh, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Walter Koenig a couple years ago at one of the uh, sci-fi conventions here in town, and I actually had a chance to talk to him a couple for a couple minutes. And I uh, showed him, I, I told him, I said, you know, you always had the coolest props in Star Trek, because he did. He always had some of the coolest things that he got to work with or that were put on him medically or something. And so I showed him this prop, and I said, do you remember this? And he was kind of looking at it, and he goes, no, no not, not really. And so I had this panel off, and I said, well, uh, flip that switch on. And then as soon as, you know, he turned this on, and he saw these lights going, I said, now watch it for a couple minutes. And, and he goes, oh, yes. He goes, I, I do remember this. And so um, it was kind of cool that it made him remember with this prop. And he goes, is this the original one that was from the movie? I said, no, I wish it was. And he goes, you know, I... He says, I saw, he goes, uh, he goes, I guess it wasn't you. He says, um, I saw the original one a few years back. Somebody had bought it at auction. And I remember when it was up for sale at auction and, uh, uh, it sold for so much money. I, it was out of my price range, but anyway, though, um, he said, I actually got to see the original one and, uh, 
it, and I, I think I saw pictures online somewhere where he's actually holding it. So it's kind of cool that he uh, was reunited with this prop. So anyway, he was nice enough to um, autograph this for me. So that is Walter Koenig's uh, autograph, and I'll show you a picture of that. So here's a picture I took of Walter when he was signing it, and you can see it in his hand right there. And so um, it was really nice talking to him, super nice guy, uh, very nice, and uh, a little quiet, you know, very soft-spoken. Um, but, you know, I think it's pretty cool that he took the time to talk to his fans, and, and uh, you know, I always felt bad for him for what happened to his son. Of course, I would never bring that up, um, talking to him, but I thought it was really cool that he took the time, and he was actually signing another photograph down here. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not. But it was me inside of a Lost in Space robot costume, and, and I, I talk about that uh, in my video where I show my full-size Lost in Space robot. And he was like, oh, you're the one that was in there? And uh, <laughs> so we were talking about that, too, and it was nice. He just randomly came into the room, and, and um, he saw the robots and thought they were really cool. And then I happened to be in the robot at the time, so I got to pose with him and had my you know arm, the robot's arm around him. And, and it was really cool. So he signed that picture for me, too. And so he was really super nice. I was really glad I had the chance to meet him. Um, I pretty much met everybody from the original cast except uh, George Takei and um, uh, James Duhon. And sadly, James uh, passed away. So anyway, uh, that was a really great opportunity to meet Walter. So there they are. There's both of them. Um, these, cool, these props are really cool. I, I really like... Star Trek had some really cool props. Their, their props were very unique in the way they look, both in the movies and the uh, TV series. It seems like other shows never quite had the same style as the props that Star Trek had, and I always thought that these things were really cool. And I really tend to love these more obscure props, you know, not just your typical communicators and tricorders and stuff, but kind of these one-offs that you only saw one time in, in uh, the movie or a TV show. But I just love these things, they're really cool. So yeah, the Photon Collector, otherwise known as a Power Leech, and uh, really cool. So I'm really glad to have these. I thought you might get a, you know, have a little bit of interest in seeing what these look like close up and maybe the little, you know, history that went into uh, what happened on the set when they were filming it. All right. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, I thank you very, very much for watching. And I hope your day is fantastic and take care.